now we will see about the infective endocarditis okay now we will see about the infective endocarditis and we will try to end the infective endocarditis in just a single page so first question comes is what is infective endocarditis so infective endocarditis means the inflammation or the infection of the endocardium of the heart now that endocard we know that the uh, heart has made up of two uh, i mean three layers that is pericardium myocardium and the endocardium so endocardium of the heart is the innermost layer of the heart and when that is infected that is called as the infective endocarditis so it is not that just the endocardium is involved or infected rather with the endocardium there is involvement or there is infection of that valves of the heart as well so infective endocarditis means the infection or the inflammation of the endocardium as well as the valves of the heart so we will end this chapter in just a single page so uh, try to be with me for that time so first coming to the what are the infect causative organisms of the infective endocarditis okay so first we will see the infective organisms so these are the most common are the staph aureus streptococcus viridens enterococci has a group this is a group of bacteria in which many bacteria comes like h4 hemophilus and so on and pneumococcus and the pseudomonas these are the most important causative organisms of the infective endocarditis okay here i have written the definition of the infective endocarditis that is the microbial invasion of the heart valves or the endocardium that is called as the infective endocarditis now that infective endocarditis is of two types okay that infective endocarditis is of two types one is the acute endocarditis and the other one is the subacute endocarditis so acute endocarditis is the endocarditis in previously normal valve by highly virulent organism like staph aureus we know that uh, uh, previously normal valve means if a valve is previously normal then a very highly virulent organisms would be needed to invade that normal structure while a already damaged structure will be invaded very easily by a, a less virulent organism as well that's why in the acute endocarditis we need a virulent organism because here the previous the valve is previously normal the valve there is no damage to the valve okay and the second thing is that the morbidity even after the antibiotic therapy is more in case of acute endocarditis but the uh, plus point for us is that this acute endocarditis is less common although morbidity is less uh, i mean morbidity is more but it is less commonly occurring to the people so that's why it is a plus point for us uh, about the acute endocarditis then we have the subacute endocarditis so in the subacute endocarditis this uh, subacute endocarditis occurs in a previously damaged valve by a low virulent organism we know that if a valve is already damaged then it will be easy for a organism to invert that already damaged valve hence it is a subacute endocarditis the most patient uh, recover after the antibiotic therapy that is a plus point for us but the bad thing for us is that it is more common so sometimes the difference is also asked between the acute endocarditis and the subacute endocarditis to you by the uh, uh, examiners on the viva table now what is the clinic what is the pathogenesis so now we will see the pathogenesis of the pathogenesis of the infective endocarditis so pathogenesis can be classified into different parts so first we will see the risk factors what are the risk factors for the infective endocarditis so risk factor is the valvular disease and the use of iv catheter these two are the most important risk factors for the infective endocarditis how is valvular disease is uh, a risk factor so valvular disease is a risk factor because when there is valvular disease there occurs turbulent blood flow okay and that turbulent blood flow causes damage of the cardiac endothelium also when we use the iv catheter that iv cath catheter may erode the endocardium of the heart and thereby causing damage to the endocardium of the heart so that's why these two iv catheter and the valvular disease are the risk factors for the infective endocarditis then we see the second part that is the endothelial injury so the endothelial injury 
has been done by the turbulent blood flow or the use of the IV catheter then after the uh, damage we know that there is formation of a platelet fibrin over that damaged part okay and uh, as there is formation of the uh, damaged uh, as there is formation of the platelets the bacteria attaches to that uh, thrombus which is which has been formed by that platelet okay and then comes the third part that is the bacterial colonization bacteria colonize over that uh, platelet or the thrombus which has been formed over the damaged endocardium or the endothelium so bacteria attaches to the thrombus because it is easy for the bacteria to attach to the platelets which were already there on the thrombus or, or, or at the endothelial injury part then we have the transient bacteremia while brushing teeth so where from where this bacteria comes so bacteremia bacteria comes uh, to attach to that site so the source of bacteria is the transient bacteremia that occurs during brushing teeth so while brushing teeth there is uh, injury to uh, very small blood vessels and from those blood vessels what happens the normal commensals bacteria from the oral cavity they enter into the general circulation of our body and those bacteria attaches to the thrombus which has been formed on uh, formed over their damaged endothelium or the endocardium and those bacteria colonize there okay so after colonization the fourth step is the vegetation formation okay so there is formation of the vegetation as they colonize they form small uh, masses there that is called as the vegetation okay and after vegetation formation those bacteria slowly and constantly as they are already i mean they are present in plenty number because they will multiply also in those uh, as they have colonized they are present in multiple numbers so they slowly invade and slowly seed into the blood stream as well and the metastasis to the other sites also so that is how they cause damage to the endocardium to the valves of the heart and they uh, bring about the infective endocarditis what is the clinical manifestation of the infective endocarditis so uh, clinical manifestation will be the very commonly is the fever chills uh, splenomegaly clubbing arterial emboli by the vegetations genuilians and the oslers mode okay these two are the very characteristic generalist gen genuilian and the oslers node these two are the very characteristic findings in case of the infective endocarditis well the clinical manifestations are the new or worsened resurgent murmur there will be a new uh, originating murmur you will see the murmur for the first time in that person or the a uh, murmur will be worsened which has been if if there is already murmur then that murmur will be worsened after that infective endocarditis so that is the clinical manifestation of the infective endocarditis then how will we diagnose this infective endocarditis diagnosis is basically the clinical diagnosis and that is called as the uh, modif by, that is by the modified duke's method the diagnosis is by the modified duke duke's method what does that duke's criteria says so according to Dick's criteria, the diagnosis is confirmed if two major criteria are present or one major and three minor criteria are present. So what are those major criteria? The major criteria is either positive blood culture. If we have done the blood culture and we have got an organism there, then that is a major criteria. Okay. Uh, and uh, if, we are, if, if we have got the, if we have got the major criteria, uh, if we have got the positive blood culture and if we have got the typical infective endocarditis organism then uh, which has been isolated from the two separate blood cultures then uh, it is a major criteria or if we have got two non uh, if, if we have got non-typical infective organisms isolated persistently from the blood cultures then also it is a major criteria so these are the uh, I mean if also if if there is positive even if there is a positive blood culture then these two has to be fulfilled then we have the positive ecg if we are seeing the murmur in the ecg then also that is also a major criteria so on if we are, if we talk broadly then we have two major criteria that is positive blood culture and the positive ecg and that is murmur on the ecg and the minor criteria are the pre the minor criteria are the the minor criteria are predisposition like if there is uh, any procedure to the heart if there is any prosthesis has been put in the heart already 
if there is, has been any heart surgery okay like that if there is predisposition that is called as the minor criteria if there is fever more than 30 that is also a minor criteria if there is vascular form like arterial emboli genuvillians is there then that is also a minor criteria if there is osler node that is also a minor criteria remember that osler node is an immunological phenomenon while the genuvillian is a vascular phenomenon this may be asked as mcq also okay then there is serological evidence of that then that is also a minor criteria so if uh, these criteria are fulfilling according to the uh, duke's criteria like if there is two major criteria present then clinical diagnosis is confirmed if there is one major plus three minor criteria then also the diagnosis is confirmed so how is it treated the treatment is uh, uh, if it is due to staph aureus, then we have to see whether it is methicillin resistant or methicillin sensitive. Methicillin sensitive is treated with napcillin 6 week and resistant is treated with vancomycin 6 week. If it is due to streptococcus viridans, then it is treated with septriaxone 4 week. If it is due to has a group bacteria, then it is treated with septriaxone for 4 week. How will you prevent the infective endocarditis? So, prevention is by the proper antisepsis before cardiac catheterization remember when we are doing the cardiac catheterization then there is very high risk of uh, eroding of the endothelium or the endocardium of the heart so that is a very common predisposing factor for the development of the infective endocarditis so proper antisepsis if uh, is done then we can uh, prevent the cardiac I mean we can prevent the infective endocarditis in future then the use of antibiotics before dental procedures because because during dental procedures the many small vessels are damaged and there is entry of the uh, normal commensals of the oral cavity into those small blood vessels reaching to the general circulation and thereby causing the infective endocarditis so if we take proper precautions during the dental procedures uh, and proper asepsis is done then we can prevent the infective endocarditis so this is all about the infective endocarditis we have talked in just a single piece everything about the infective endocarditis